the first to know in Sempi TV. Engineer Kwabna in Japan, Akasa Afa Dr. Mahmoud Baumia campaign update a koso. Akasa Afa ni me bibrehu. Ose NDC for no more doing say a far gone deal based on economic situations again I face as a result of global challenges. Now, so Dr. Mahmoud Baumia person proof is a grown and and no any form. Ose so Kasa e. If a uh, conversation on a Alan Kudu chairman thing, a dear, if a the leaving of the new patriotic party, a patriotic party for us, a party here uh, over 30 years was we'll sacrificing a lot for a banner saying out in Regina JJ Moon, a democratic process on one castle film where who serious infractions be a uh, our crown your more vote than on no now so or that's we then. Ejinim. Secondly, we can about conversation on it. Doctor Matthew Opoku Prempe, I have a after Doctor Mabud Baumia a catch in uh, private. Say we settled on Doctor Matthew Opoku Prempe as the running mate. In comedy, I also new way now on a lawyer Paul Adam Oche. Any this I'm coming. Go for we break unconfirmed reports. About say, say under Doctor Mahmoud Bamia presidency, the likelihood say engineer Kwabna in Japan, Ebeye, the chief of staff, is very very high. And in this area, even though reports be an any day, share that and buy it. Now, secondly, among all presidential flag bearers, among Doctor Mahmoud Bamia, a competitor, engineer Kwabna in Japan, any sir flag bearer. Uh, aspirant uh, on a Dr. Mahmoud Bami a chimpa. I said, baby, even not, we pay Saraga Tamale Yendi Bandai na engineer Kwabne Japan. Eti Basin. Eti on a Dr. Mahmoud Bami a chimpa. You could see in Komodia on a lawyer Paul or the Motri, a dear, for Dr. Mahmoud Bami a campaign. Conversations with Alan Kojo Chaman saying, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe's campaign. As well as on the ground with Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia's Youth Connect in Breaking the Eight. I think that uh, um, Bahamia has shown that he is a hard worker. Um, he's prepared to get down to the ground, do some retail campaigning, touch hearts and souls. And that's what it is. People are excited to take selfies with him. The kids and, and in the strategy of having this Youth Connect, that, yes. that seems to be working like magic. Because, you see, all political leaders, if mm -hmm. you are really genuine and you want to be a good political leader, you should be brave enough to subject yourself to scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And when he goes and sits in front of students... How, how does that yes. work? Some of you was trying to explain, but I didn't get it. When you finish the morning campaign, then every evening in the town, you set aside time for only youth to come and meet with you guys? Yes, yes, yes. Students, workers, artisans hairdressers you know all that so they know that dr baumia is in town he's meeting us at seven at this hall yes okay so you guys are there they come we set it up they are there they come in there and then he delivers a statement okay the vision of transforming a country based on uh, the fourth industrial revolution that this world is in right now in the digital world that he wants to push this country along a data driven society and the beauty of it is that question and answer session oh they are they asking questions yes. you remember a nurse asking him a very difficult question what did the nurse say <laughs> you know about the alawa and all that that time you oh. know the allowances have been delayed, delayed yeah. yeah and he promised that look he will work hard with the finance minister to release it and some releases have been made he admitted that yes there have been problems with it but at least it's better with the government that reinstated it mm -hmm. than with someone who cancelled it mm -hmm. you know so he doesn't only go to lecture people and when he meets the clergy, he meets the clergy wherever he goes. Muslim clerics, faith-based organizations, after delivering, he allows them to ask questions. The issues of the LGBT and his views on things. Very difficult questions are asked. The, the banking, you know, so I didn't oh, know, the banking I, questions I, are I, I didn't know some uh, of uh, or so forth. <laughs> when they had money in some, money in some of these, uh, <laughs> you know, so, and they, they questioned it, you know, and that kind of thing. So it, is, it shows that he's, he's prepared. Uh -huh. He's mentally on top of his game. He's very sharp. He has the vitality. Look at the amount of times he's walking around the country. He's very strong. And 
you know, it shows the confidence uh, of a man to touch every Ghanaian and, and it is not regulated. Even the security have a, a tough time with that because Trying to manage all he sees, he, he catches somebody's eye, he goes there, he shakes the person and they are all, you know, all over him. And I think that has been good, is dispel the mystique of who political leaders should be. They should be close to the people. You are the vice president, you are the president. You are elected by the people. They give you the power and you should be close to them. And I think the strategy is working and the momentum is gaining ground. I suspect the NDC thought it was a done deal for them. Hmm. Because in all this time, they haven't been able to put together a campaign. Mm. a sustained campaign. In fact, it's only recently I saw that they had now uh, set up a campaign team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's over a year after being elected. Mm. And so it tells you the state of preparedness. So Ghanaians are watching. They know that he's far more prepared. I mean, this is someone who is in office. You are in a position. And you can't prepare a message to face the Ghanaian people. You can't conduct or prosecute a very efficient, effective campaign around the country and we have only barely four months to elections so who would they trust with the mandate to efficiently run this country i do think most ghanaians would would hang their bets on dr mahmoud baumia irrespective of the economic situation irrespective of the fact that they said uh, akufado was disappointing dr baumia said things that he would do he didn't do all of these things keep coming up look being in government mm -hmm. is very tough and i'm mm -hmm. sure dr baumia would have learned some experience you know, mm -hmm. build some stock of mm -hmm. experience from what he's been through mm -hmm. you know it's not everything that you intend to do that you may be able to achieve when you are in government yeah. you understand that and the Ghanaian people know that the amount of work that the government has been able to deliver in these very difficult times and there was there's been a global crunch so many people think that is only in Ghana but you travel a lot but the Ghanaians are both tell us yeah it's but, very tough outside yeah. I mean um, these days when you go out you can't even shop because mm. things that you buy for forty dollars are now one hundred and twenty dollars mm -hmm. you understand i mean inflation in places that was always lower single digit are heading close to double digit so that is not to say that we couldn't have done things differently of course i'm sure there have been shortcomings and he realizes it and he i think i will trust him and i know majority of Ghanaians will trust him to lead us into this new era new chapter is more important about our values to restore our values of, as Ghanaians and the respect for even governance and democracy right now the confidence that people should have on political leadership has taken a little bit of a beating mm. you understand Alan Martin's campaign is not going well uh, well, do you think I, I don't that, want to pass a comment on yeah. that. You know, that I, I don't know why he says that. I don't know whether it's not going well. Not, pass but... and, and again, I, I take friendships very seriously. Mm -hmm. I've had a very long uh, relationship, brotherly relationship with Alan Chopin. He's like a big brother to me. Oh, I see. You understand? We are very close. We've been very close. I disagree with the decision to leave because I think for something that we've all built with our sweat and toil for over 30 years and mm -hmm. uh, he was the president of the Young Executive Forum mm -hmm. at the very beginning and all that so and we all took part in this election I didn't see anything that went so seriously wrong with the election it's just that I didn't get much of a vote mm -hmm. he had a bit more, more than much more than me but couldn't make it so I thought he should have just accepted it and then as a true Democrat that I know he is, uh, should have worked with the, the winner of the, the election, which is Dr. Baumia, but he's, he's an adult. So we can, you know, but I still, we are friends once in a while. Um, I saw him the last time at a function not too long ago. We, we had a little chat. Um, I'm, I'm sad that he's not with us, but I don't want to comment on that. I, okay. I really, truly don't want to comment on that. And uh, it, it hurts me that he's, is not with the MPP because I, I think he played such a big role at the, at the formative years mm. of this party. And having served as uh, is, the party has also given him a big. He's the longest trade minister. Trade minister in the country. Yeah. Cumulatively. Eight. No, cumulatively, six years, eight years. Cumulatively, about uh, 11 years. Mm -mm -mm. And then ambassador for close to two years. So, yeah. um, if you're talking about the party also. You know, the party has given him provided him a platform. Yeah, I think yeah. he also has to be grateful to the party. It yeah. works both ways, mm. and uh, 
And for me, I was disappointed in that decision, but he's still a very, my, I consider him a friend and a brother. And uh, um, I think it, it will remain so. We will disagree politically. I don't think an independent candidate can do much in Ghana. It's not easy to run a campaign. Mm -hmm. It is not easy to run a, a presidential campaign. So I knew that yeah, it would be tough to, to go the full hog. Well, you know that the choice of a running mate is the sole prerogative of the candidate. Yeah, but after he's done it, he probably must have shared with you the inner campaign people. That is not something I want to share with you. I mean, uh, okay, like, I, mean, okay I get it. He called me and had a discussion and, yeah, yeah. and said he had settled on Napo. Yeah. Was, so I called Napo to uh, congratulate him even before the matter came out. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, 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 because as soon as I had had a discussion with the candidate and he had decided that this is the decision he has taken, yeah. and, and that's fine. I mean, that is his decision. I advise him, I would advise him, share a lot of uh, insights, but the decision lies with him. That is his but you're also like Kumasi boy. Uh, does the choice look like Ashanti is going to be on board? Do you, do you see that? Ashanti is always on board with the MPP. I think what is important is the harmony within the party in the constituencies. Mm. All politics is local. Mm. There has been some abrasive parliamentary primaries. Mm -hmm. And... You know, so that has left in its wake some Tom, overhanging of discomfort and issues that we are trying to deal with. I am confident that we'll be able to deal with them. Some of us are on board to help. I've, I've been speaking to a lot of candidates who have lost. Mm -hmm. And I say, look, uh, it's tough. We've all been through difficult and tough times. But let's rally around our party. You know, so that is the contribution I'm making. But no person better than Kabir Japan can say that. Because anybody has suffered in this party, it is Kabir Japan. <laughs> so if he tells you that, I mean, you can't compare your suffering to Kabir Japan. Oh, not that. I mean, you try to cajole them and let them mm -hmm. understand that this party, we stand for values. Mm -hmm. Our values as Democrats. Our forefathers fought <laughs> Kwame Nkrumah because of one party state. We mm -hmm. believed in democracy. We believed in elections. I do and not they didn't understand. do it for money. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in fact, the monetization of the electoral process is something we have to fight Going forward, and I've been having those discussions with the, the presidential candidate, Dr. Baumia. It is not sustainable. It to get to a point, good people will say, we don't want to have anything to do with politics. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to go down and tell our delegates. In fact, they are not called delegates. They are executives. They are the ones who are frontline soldiers working as polling station executives. They are the ones who are supposed to dedicate themselves, going into homes, you know, doing all the hand-to-hand -hand work, determining who our voters are in different localities and all that. That is their work. The canvases, they are our solid canvases in the rural communities. But because we want to reward them and say, look, because you work so hard for us, when we have to elect a leader, you have to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So you become a delegate. But they are executives first. It appears that the mm -hmm. name delegates us overtaking mm -hmm. the, 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 the prime one. Mm -hmm. you know, so we need to go back and let them know. I think there's been some dissatisfaction because, um, of course, if somebody becomes an MP and he comes to Accra and he's given a four-wheel drive, I mean, Ghanaians have become so materialistic and sometimes, I don't know. I mean, it's part of the work. He's coming from Bimbila or Saboba. He has to use a four-wheel drive back home. And then, mm -hmm. because of that, he incurs the displeasure of people. You know, and but he's now a big man. Big man. He's and then down sometimes on them. the fault is also down with the MPs. Instead of going down and being humble and dealing with them, let, letting them know that I'm still the same person. You don't roll up and then they don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that kind of disaffection, it happens especially with ruling government. So, after two terms, there's always that amount of disaffection. But it is for us as political leaders to let our party call down there, the base animate the base, rejuvenate the base, get them ready for action. An enthusiastic base will always deliver us victory. So for me, Ashanti, yes, there are issues, but the issues are being resolved. The last time I, we went to Kwabre, the town rules in Kenya say had been done, mm -hmm. you know, and you know they were very angry. They give us <laughs> about the biggest vote in the region, and a lot of it is being done. They know we can't do everything at the same time. And these are crunch periods. Mm -hmm. And some of the rules have been there since independence. It's never been done. We, I don't think it's fair to put a gun to the head of Dr. Baumia that you should. Everybody is asking for a road. Yes, 
we appreciate that, but we've got to be upfront with the Ghanaian people that some of the things cannot be handled. And that is why, if I had been part of government, I wouldn't have advised that we do 111 at the same time. We could have started with maybe 50, complete it, move it to another 30, and then, but we've touched all, but it's good, it's equitable, because sometimes mm -hmm. everybody's seeing that, that mine is coming. Is being, yes. Yeah. And they are so happy, especially the provision of the health facilities. I mean, health delivery in some of our communities is life-threatening. Mm -hmm. Paul, you travel to some of the communities, you look at your fellow Ghanaian, the kids, and where they are. I mean, we went and cut the sword for this STEM College of Education in Karaga, the finance minister's uh, constituency. Mm -hmm. Huge crowd. Everybody came with the, the, those tricycles on their own. You would think it's a factory. <laughs> so, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you should see the numbers, you know. Uh, and it is deep, 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 deep. And I've never seen an area that has such a large amount of cows and, and, and sheep and goats. So it means that you can cite animal husbandry, some meat processing factory somewhere there. It is economic activity that can turn around these rural areas. We've got to begin to cite facilities and uh, pr projects in those areas to lift the economic activity. The workers there will need a school, they will need a hospital. It generates economic activity. If you look at the big English towns in California, is either the gold rush or the steel mines in Newcastle and the, uh, that kind of thing. You know? So um, I think on the whole, I do believe there are challenges. It is really tough. I mean, I know it's tough when I say it's tough because yesterday I went into a, a salon to try and do my hands were very nasty so i was trying to do what, what do they call it is it manicure manicure yeah. pedicure whatever yeah and you know you could see that it's, it's tough i mean not a lot of people were walking in i was wondering the electricity bill so i was speaking to the lady who runs the place how are things and you know it's tough it's tough. manicure That's